Okay, so why is pi equal to 3.14? That's the topic of this video. And I'm going to explain this at like a sixth grade uh, level, but basically anyone's going to be able to understand this. And if you uh, are not familiar with this symbol, we call this thing pi. Okay, I'll write it out here like this. And it uh, uh, represents a number. Okay, now that number, uh, for the most part, if people are familiar with pi, they know that the number is equal to 3.14. However, this is actually not correct. Okay, pi is not equal to 3.14. So some of you are out there saying, well, then why did you write that? Well, technically what I should have wrote was this. Pi is approximately 3.14. Of course, that's a big difference. It's not exactly equal to 3.14 because this number, pi, and we give it a symbol to represent uh, because this decimal keeps going on and on and on until infinity. Okay, so it doesn't stop at 3.14. There's more numbers behind this number right here. And you're like, say, well, okay, well, if I keep writing more digits and more digits. But the problem is uh, these digits do not repeat and they don't end. So this type of number in mathematics is called an irrational number. And pi is probably the most famous irrational number uh, in mathematics. So we're saying, well, we can't write an infinite amount of digits, so let's just give it a symbol like this, and we'll, we'll kind of approximate it, 3.14, so we can do some things with the number. But uh, really what we're going to hone in on this video, <clears throat> excuse me, is what is, like, why is uh, pi approximately 3.14? There's this kind of special value, 3.14, and from a fraction standpoint, uh, 22 sevenths is also kind of a um, uh, an approximation, a pretty good approximation with pi. But why learn pi? What's the value in it? Well, pi is probably one of the most important uh, values in all of mathematics, algebra, trigonometry, uh, calculus, etc. We're not going to get into that, but you need to know uh, this. Uh, you need to be very familiar with pi. And let's just first, you know, understand why this uh, value is around 3.14, and that's kind of going to be the main uh, topic of this video. And I'm going to get into this in just one second. But uh, first, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tablet Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. And over several years, I've constructed what I like to believe is one of the best online math help programs there is. Of course, I'll let you be the judge of that. Uh, you can check out my math help program by following the link in the description of this video. But uh, basically, I have 100 plus different math courses ranging from pre-algebra, algebra 1, geometry, algebra 2. I'm going to be launching pre-calculus here shortly. But I have uh, many courses in the area of test preparation. So if you're studying for like the GED, SAT, ACT, there's a ton of tests out there that have a lot of math on them. Uh, Accuplace or CLEP, um, Alex exam or teacher certification exam, nursing entrance, ASVAB. Uh, and if you don't do well in the math sections on those particular exams, you don't do well on the exams. So we don't want that to happen. If you're studying for any of those exams, just go to my website, check out my full course catalog, and I should have what you are studying. Now, if I do not, please drop me a line and I will help you out the best I can. Um, I also do a lot with independent learners like homeschoolers. So if you homeschool, uh, have a great homeschool learning system, and then obviously I help those of you that are struggling in your current math courses. But one thing that I cannot do for you that you must do for yourself if you are serious about improving or learning mathematics, and that is the following. Uh, you got to take great notes. Okay, Over decades of teaching mathematics, it's apparent to me that those students that uh, take great notes almost always uh, end up doing very, very well in the course. And then the reverse is true. Those students who were like me way back in the good old 1980s, uh, and what did I do back in the 1980s when I was in school? Well, I was talking to my friends. They were talking to me. We were thinking about the weekend, and that was uh, starting on Monday, and I was already thinking about the next weekend. You know, I get it, uh, and uh, the thing about it is this. I paid a price. I didn't learn how to be a good student uh, until I went to college, but uh, you really need strong academic habits to do well in math. It's just there's no shortcuts, and you have to be highly focused. And the key to uh, staying focused is taking great math notes. Okay, this is an essential. It's almost in a re well, it is a requirement. Okay, so improving your note taking and things will get better for you for sure. 
But in the meantime, I offer detailed comprehensive math notes to include pre-algebra, algebra one, geometry, algebra two, and trigonometry. You can find the links to those notes in the description of this video. Okay, so let's get into uh, this super famous uh, number pi, probably the most famous number in mathematics. And let's uh, understand, okay, why it's around 3.14, okay? So pi is about circles. It's related to circles. It's a number that describes some sort of relationship in circles, and it doesn't make a difference if we're talking about small circles, medium circles, big circles, gigantic circles. A circle is a circle, okay? So here I have three circles uh, to kind of um, represent uh, or illustrate how we get this number 3.14 on and on and on, but let's just use this as a pretty decent approximation. Now, uh, in a circle, we have, you kind of think of it as uh, the distance around the circle. So let's say I had a string or a tape measure, and I went around the circle like so, and I measured it, okay? So you could take like a piece of string, wrap it around that circle, and then, uh, straighten out the string and measure it, or you can just get a little uh, tape measure and you know go around. But nevertheless, let's say we measure the circle and we went around this. Now this is kind of like if we had a square or a rectangle, excuse me, and I measured all, all the way around, that's like finding the perimeter okay, of an object. But in circles, when we find the perimeter or the distance around, we have a special word for that, and that is called the circumference. So let's kind of write that down here. Uh, circumference. I'll just kind of abbreviate it. And that's the distance around the circle. Okay. Now, let's say we had this number, whatever it is. Okay. Now, let's talk about the width of a circle. What's the widest part of a circle? Well, it wouldn't be from here to here or here to here. Okay. That's not the widest part. The widest part is from here to here. Okay, matter of fact, I can go, I can measure it in different directions, but it's going to go through the center of the circle, okay, and we call that the diameter, all right, and that's the widest part of the circle. So let's get that measurement as well. So let's say we can kind of get that measurement, and we would be good to go. Now, so we have the circumference, and we have the diameter, the distance around the circle, and the width of the circle. Well, guess what? If we take the circumference and divide it by the diameter, we're going, to, we're going to get a decimal that's like this, 3.14, on and on and on and on and on, okay? So this is where the value pi comes from, okay? So the, any, the circumference of a circle divided by its diameter is pi, all right? And again, this decimal goes on to infinity. It's an irrational number, okay? In other words, these digits... Uh, don't repeat, and we don't know the next digit. We have to keep calculating out forever and ever and ever. So we just give it this symbol right here. Like, hey, you know what? We're not going to write this whole thing out. Let's give uh, pi this symbol, and then we'll, uh, for um, calculation purposes, we can use a decimal 3.14, or um, 22 sevenths is actually a pretty good fraction uh, equivalent uh, of uh, or approximation of pi because we need to use pi in various calculations like for example the area of a circle is pi r squared okay so if i want to find the actual area i'm going to need to use um, some value for pi just can't have it like this however uh, in mathematics it's pretty common to leave our answers like say six pi okay uh, we do leave answers in this form this is an exact um, uh, form of an answer but we can always go into our calculator and uh, multiply 6 times 3.14 and get some sort of uh, pretty decent approximation. Now, let's, uh, let's continue on. So this circle here, I took the circumference and I divided by the diameter, and I got pi. Well, it doesn't make a difference what circle you're dealing with, what size circle. Here, okay, if I take the circumference and I divide it by the diameter of this little medium circle, guess what? I'm going to get pi. And how about this little tiny circle over here? Let's not forget this guy. I take the circumference of this little circle and divide it by its diameter. And what value do I get? I get pi. Okay, so that's what pi is. Right? And that's basically, um, it's a relationship between, this. it's the uh, circumference of a circle divided by its diameter. And that is pi. Okay, but a couple of things that I want you to walk away from from this video is, 
one, why is pi 3.14? But um, uh, most importantly, that pi is not equal to 3.14. That pi is approximately equal to 3.14 or 22 sevenths. Okay, we use these values for calculation purposes. Of course, if you go into your calculator, you can uh, pull up more digits. Matter of fact, there are some pretty impressive human beings out there that have memorized pi to like uh, like a thousand digits. I mean, it's pretty crazy. And uh, generally speaking, if you didn't know this, 3.14, there pi is so famous that we actually have a pi day. Now you might be thinking to me that oh, you're making this up. No, I'm not making this up. 3.14 March. March, right, for three, the third month, 14th is Pi Day, okay? And people celebrate Pi because it is absolutely probably the most famous, useful, impactful value number in mathematics. All right, so hopefully you found this video interesting and you're like, wow, you know, if you understand everything I just uh, said right now, you'll know uh, more about Pi than 99.99% of the population. And you might be saying, yeah, well, so what's what's the big deal? When am I, when am I ever going to use it? Well, if you're watching this video and you're learning math, you'll be surrounded by Pi. Pi is, is everywhere, okay? And now you know a little bit more about it. Okay, so if this video was helpful or interesting, please consider smashing that like button. That definitely helps me out. And uh, if you're new to my YouTube channel, please consider subscribing. Been on YouTube for a long time. Um, great platform for someone like myself who's obsessed with trying to teach math in a clear and understandable way. Nobody should be failing math, okay? If you're doing your part, taking great math notes, talking to your math teacher, okay? Uh, if you need help beyond that, there's so many free resources. If you like my teaching style, I would love nothing more than to help you out with my videos, okay? Now, if you want my best math help, then you wanna check out my uh, math help program. But nevertheless, take the initiative and uh, don't accept uh, struggling in mathematics, okay? There's definitely no reason for that, especially uh, in today's day and, uh, you know, with all the technology that we have. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.